you probably already know that water in oil is not a good thing. It can cause rust and corrosion, it can cause hydrolysis of the oil, and it can form stable emulsions. Now, in general, oil and water like to separate from each other, and this breaks the emulsion. But in some circumstances, they want to stay together, and so it needs a little bit of a helping hand. How do we achieve that? Well, we use demulsifiers. And how do demulsifiers work? Well, let's get into it. So let's talk about demulsifier additives. And in order to talk about demulsifiers, we want to really better understand what an emulsion actually is. So you've probably heard the term oil and water cannot mix. That's not entirely true though. We see many circumstances in which oil and water do mix quite readily and in fact form stable mixtures. And these effectively are what emulsions are. Some examples are, for example, butter, which is a water in oil emulsion. Then you've got milk, which is an oil in water emulsion. So the lipids and the fats that come from the cow are suspended in water. Then you've got something like mayonnaise, a very, very thick and very stable emulsion of both oil and water. Now, mayonnaise is a really good example because it, it can show us how to stabilize an emulsion. So what's the key to stabilizing oil and water in mayonnaise? Well, if you've ever made mayonnaise, it's usually an exercise in mixing oil and water and whisking it vigorously. So we need that, that motion to suspend lots of water droplets in the oil. But the other key ingredient is egg. Now, we haven't chosen egg, although the person who invented mayonnaise may have just found it by accident. But the key part of the egg which helps stabilize the emulsion is actually cholesterol. Now, you're probably f familiar with cholesterol because everyone talks about it in terms of good and bad fats. But this is what the actual cholesterol molecule looks like. It's a combination of a polar head and a nonpolar tail. That's probably quite familiar to you because many of our surfactant molecules that we use in other additives look quite similar to this. Detergents, dispersants, even some anti-wear additives look a lot like a cholesterol molecule. And so by adjusting the polar head and the nonpolar tail, we can get all of these different surfactant molecules to behave in different ways. Now, as it happens, the cholesterol of an egg has a polar head which likes to bind with water droplets and a nonpolar tail, which likes to say suspended in the oil. So if we have enough of these cholesterol molecules, they can envelop a water droplet and hold it in suspension. So if we have enough of these, then we can suspend lots of different water droplets. And that's how we have what is an effectively a homogeneous mixture, which is the emulsion. So if we were to remove all of these cholesterol molecules, then the polarity of the water is going to attract all of these water droplets to each other and they eventually coalesce into large water droplets. Because the specific gravity of water is usually heavier than an oil, it's going to want to sink to the bottom of the reservoir where we can obviously drain it off. Now, one caveat to that, obviously water is lighter than polyalkylene glycols and will generally float to the surface of a PAG reservoir. So this is generally how we can understand emulsions, right? So generally, oil and water don't want to mix, but if we have particles or molecules inside this mixture, then we can hold tiny droplets in suspension. That can also give us a clue into how we might assist in the breaking of an emulsion. So demulsifier additives look a lot like cholesterol. They look a lot like other surfactants. We need something which is soluble in the oil, but has some part of the molecule which is attracted to water. So just like cholesterol, it's going to envelop a water molecule. The difference here is that when we have lots of these together, what we want is a tail that is attracted to other demulsifier tails. If we can achieve that, what it will do is bring all of these different suspended droplets together to, to make them coalesce into a large water particle. How that happens at a micro scale is that as these two move closer and closer together, the tails try to repel each other and they enable the water to come into contact. Therefore, it forms a larger water droplet. So that's effectively how demulsifier additives work. They're a form of surfactant. Now, one of the reasons why we want to avoid emulsions is because they can do some really interesting things with our viscosities. So as an example, if I mixed water and vegetable oil 
then I would expect that the viscosity of the product is about halfway between the two. So we would expect that mayonnaise is somewhere in thickness between water and vegetable oil. But that's clearly not the case. Mayonnaise is extremely thick and requires some shear force in order for it to float. In fact, if you actually measure the viscosity of mayonnaise, and I don't know who actually did this, then you'll find it's almost eight or 9,000 times the viscosity of water and many, many more times the viscosity of vegetable oil. So the fact that it's an emulsion plays really interesting tricks with exactly um, the viscosity of our final product. That can be a little bit dangerous when it comes to trying to get uh, an oil and water emulsion to flow around our system. So it might starve areas of lubricant and it can also do interesting things to you know the tribofilm and film thickness. Now, the fact that some oils form emulsions and others don't can be down to the formulation. So as an example, we talked about those surfactant molecules wanting to bind with both the water and the oil. This means that many dispersants and detergents will aid the creation of an emulsion. So that's why, for example, we get differences in formulations between oils that are designed specifically for steam turbines and specifically for gas turbines. In a steam turbine, we expect to encounter water. So we need really good water separability. Whereas in a gas turbine, we don't expect to encounter water and therefore that's not a requirement for the formulation. So in a, in a gas turbine, where we may have a preference to control varnish and varnish precursors, we may add more detergents into the formulation to help control those deposits. But we can't do that on a steam turbine because we want the emulsion to be able to break. So this can help explain why some oils are different from each other.